Hey Grade 11s, so the second exam question that you had to work through was from the November 2019 national paper um, and question 3 says the following. In the diagram, P, which they don't give you any coordinates for, R, which is 3 and 5, S, negative 3, negative 7, and T, negative 5, and K are vertices of a trapezium, P, R, S, T, and P, T is parallel to R, S, which they indicate with the arrows. We should have known that as well anyway, because that's the properties of a trapezium, one pair of parallel sides. R, S, and P, R cut the y-axis at D and C, which was 0 and 5, respectively. P, T, and R, S cut the x-axis at E and F, respectively. Also, they tell you that P, E, F forms angle theta. Okay, which you should straight away be thinking tan theta equals inclination of the line and all that because that's new in grade 11. Right, so going to the question, <clears throat> and as always, I'm just going to float between the memo and the question paper. The first part, 3.1, says write down the equation of PR. There's PR over there. It's a totally flat horizontal line. Remember, if the line is totally flat, it doesn't really conform to the y is equal to mx plus c. It's simply going to be y is equal to 5. Why is there no mx? There's no mx because the gradient of that line, a totally flat line, would be 0. So 0 times x falls that part away, and it's simply going to be y is equal to 5. Let's go have a look there. There he is. Equation of pr, y is equal to 5. Don't know why my y didn't highlight. Okay, moving to 3.2.1. Calculate the gradient r s so r down to s there we need to work out the gradient we can already see just by looking that the gradient is going to be positive now change in y over change in x or simply how many units does the y change from 5 down to negative 7 is a change of 12 how many units does the x change 3 to negative 3 is a change of 6 so 12 divided by 6 is a gradient of 2. Let's go see if we were correct. There we go. M of RS, the gradient of RS, and they sub in a whole bunch of figures. You can use the gradient formula there, but it's simple just to see 2 is the answer, 12 over 6. Right, the next one, 3.2.2. Work out the size of theta. You're always going to have a question like this in grade 11, and that theta there talks about the inclination of the line up until the line PE, or if you want, PT. Right, now we need to know the gradient of PT. It does not tell us what the gradient of PT is, and we probably couldn't work it out, because we know we don't have P's coordinate, and we don't have a complete coordinate for T. However, because PT is parallel to RS, we know that PT's gradient must also be 2. Let's see if the memo says that. There it is. The gradient of RS is equal to the gradient of PT. Why? PT is parallel to RS. Please state that. There is a mark for that. Therefore, tan theta is equal to 2. Where did we get 2 from? It's the gradient of our line. Therefore, shift tan 2 makes our angle of inclination or theta 63,43. Happy. 3.2.3. Work out the coordinates of D. Right. If you look at D, D is the y-intercept of the line RS. So how do we usually find the y-intercept of a straight line? To find the y-intercept, we make x equal to 0. So let us first find the equation of the line RS. We do this by saying y equals mx plus c. Sub in the m, which we know to be 2. And now we can sub in one of the points, either R or S, but I'd probably choose R because there's no negatives there. Sub in the point R into the equation Y minus Y1 equals X, oh, sorry, M, X minus X1. There it is there. In it's all There's options here. So Y minus 5, which was the Y of R, minus, is equal to 2, our gradient, X minus 3 which was the x of r. So just dealing with this first option, you could then times the 2 into the brackets to give us 2x minus 6, and then add that 5 to give us y is equal to 
2x minus 1, right? Or the another way to do it is to use this right side here where my cursor is, 5 being the y value of r is equal to the gradient 2 times the x value of r plus c. You remember y equals mx plus c. So then if I subtract the 6, I get c still of negative 1, so y is equal to 2x minus 1. What does the, the minus 1 then tell you? The minus 1 is the y-intercept. But be very careful. How have they asked for the answer? They asked for the coordinates of d. So you could not just say d equals negative 1. You have to say d naught and negative 1. It's a coordinate. Okay, so 3.2.3 is done. Moving to 3.3, if it is given that ts is 2 root 5, calculate the value of k. Right, so ts, they tell you down here, that length of that line is 2 root 5. How would we have got 2 root 5? We would have used the distance formula. The distance formula is only missing the k there, the y value of t. So we can reconstruct the distance formula and make it equal to 2 root 5. So, firstly, negative 5 to negative 3 is a distance of 2, and we'd square it, right? So watch here. St, the distance we're dealing with, is equal to 2 root 5, which we were given, which would be achieved by saying the square root of the x1 minus the x2 all squared, plus the y1 minus the y2 all squared. So the only unknown in this line here is then the k, the y value of t, was it? Yes. Okay, so what do we do now? What we could do is we could just say, let us square both sides. So if we square both sides, it would get rid of this root sign, right? If we square the root sign, a root times a square sign is gone. If we square 2 root 5, the square of 2 root 5 will be 4 times 5, which there is 20, right? Now that we've squared this root and got rid of it, negative 5 minus minus 3 would give you negative 2. And if I square it, I get 4. There's my 4. Then k plus 7, all squared, is over there. So if I subtract the 4 across, I get 16. And then I could times this out. Otherwise, you could work it like a shortcut and say, well, if I square root my left side, I'm going to square root my right side. Just bear in mind that the square root of 16 is 4 or negative 4. So now when I subtract my 7, I have to take both options. Either 4 minus 7, so negative 3 as my one option, or negative 4 minus another 7 is negative 11. Right? So there are my two options for k. How come we have to choose one though? If we go look at our picture, we have got two options for k. Why would it only be negative 3 though? Because that y value of s is negative 7. So then surely k must be higher than negative 7, so negative 3. If it was negative 11, it would be lower down, not higher up. So that's why we've ignored the negative 11 and concluded and said, therefore, k is equal to negative 3. Okay, the slight variation is would have been to multiply out that bracket of k plus 7. So k squared plus 14k plus 33. Happy where, where I am now in the, in the memo. And then I would have used quadratic trinomial like so. I would have got my two options, negative 11 and negative 3, and I would have still chosen negative 3. Okay, so distance formula reconstructed. 3.4, our last question here, it seems, says parallelogram T, D, N, S, right? Let's just go have a look there. T, D, there's no N, S. Let's carry on reading. T, D, N, S with N in the fourth quadrant is drawn. Calculate the coordinates of N, right? So think carefully here. T, where I am now, D, N would have to be somewhere in the fourth quadrant. S. Please keep it in, in the order of letters that they give you. T, D, N somewhere here, S. It's going to form quite a squashed, almost diamond-shaped uh, quadrilateral. They want us to know or to calculate the coordinates of N. 
it's very important to realize that they're telling us that it is a parallelogram. Right. So listen carefully. The pattern that emerges going from T down and across to S would have to be the same pattern as D going down and across to N. Right. So how many down does it go from T to S? Well, T is Y value is negative 3. The S's Y value is negative 7. So it is 4 down. Right? And how many across is it going from T to S? Negative 5 to negative 3 is 2 right or across. So if D's coordinate was 0 and negative 1, what was it? What was D's coordinate again? Yes, 0 and negative 1. So if that's 0 and negative 1, we are going to have to go 4 down and 2 across. So 4 down will take us to negative 5 for y, and 2 across will take us to 2 for x. Let's go see if we are correct. Okay, and that's what it's saying here. T to S is... Okay, don't worry about the fancy lingo, but it's going 2 right, x plus 2 there, and 4 down. That's what that symbol is saying. 2 across and 4 down. So then D to N must be, uh, what did we say? 2 across and 4 down. So from 0 to negative 1, 2 across is therefore 0 becomes a 2 for N, and 4 down from negative 1 is negative 5 as a Y value for N. Okay, that is the simplest, simplest way to find your answer. I'm going to show you the second way though. If you go back to your picture and picture your T, D, N, S, your diagonal D, N, the midpoint of D, sorry, D, S, the diagonal D, S's midpoint would have to be the same midpoint as the diagonal T through to N. So I'll show you the memo here. The midpoint of T, N, as I said, must equal the midpoint of S, D. We can work out the midpoint of S, D right? Because we knew the values of S and of D. So now let's go have a look. What would the midpoint of S, D have been? It would have been negative 3 over 2, right, for X, because that X was 0, this X is negative 3, so negative 3 over 2, and what? Negative uh, Y value is neg negative 5, am I right? Uh, well, yeah, there's the there's the y's midpoint. Negative seven plus minus one is negative eight divided by two is negative four. So you just are now going to solve for the unknown x because the x of n plus the x of t divided by two would have to equal the midpoint. And the same here, the y value of n plus the y value of t divided by two would have to equal the midpoint's y. So a bit more complicated, look carefully, but your answer ends up being exactly the same. Okay, I do encourage you to go the first way, the whole counting the steps, the translation, as it is much easier. Okay, hopefully this video assists you in understanding the paper of November 2019.